Hi guys, welcome back to GP Reactions. Um, I hope you're really well. I hope you've been having a great week. And this is one of the more unusual reactions I'm doing because I don't usually react at night, but uh, I'm feeling like I'm a little bit perky, a little bit energized. So I thought, why not uh, do a couple of reactions tonight? So really looking forward to this. And um, just want to say a big thank you to everybody who has subscribed to my channel. Uh, really do appreciate that. I am going to be honest, I'm pushing for 2,000 subscribers. Um, that would be lovely, a uh, lovely way to move into springtime and um, hopefully on to even more subscribers. I um, I haven't, like I said, I haven't done any reactions at night, so uh, this is kind of a little bit strange for me. I finished work, I've come home, and um, yeah, I was thinking about what to react to, and then this one came up and I thought, this looks really interesting. It is a track by the Icicle Works, and um, I vaguely remember this group from 1984, I think. I've already reacted to Love is a Wonderful Colour. So I thought I would take the first track of their debut album, uh, what is that called? A self-titled debut album, The Icicle Works. And this track is called Chop the Tree. Um, group consists of Ian McNabb on lead vocals, Ray Corkill, Richard Nath on piano, and Matthew Priest on drums. Um, this album was released on the 23rd of March 1984. And like I said, this is the first track on side one of our album. It is actually, I think, a live version on the tube. So um, it does, it, it will sort of like loop into uh, Love is a Wonderful Colour. I'm hoping there's a bit of a gap so that I can pause it there. Um, or I might just let it run and um, react to both tracks um, at the same time. So it'd be great actually to see him. I'm not sure if I've actually seen a video of him live ever. So um, yeah, without further ado, this is the Icicle Works and um, Chop the Tree. I really like the appearance of the uh, uh, microphone. I'm just going to pause here. Already I'm absolutely loving this track. It's uh, got a really good kind of bass line to it and um, just loving the tempo and the energy of this. It's, it feels, I didn't know what to expect as a first track on an album. Sometimes they kind of start off a little bit slow, um, but uh, this actually feels like it's really, really good quality um, music. And uh, it's kind of got me really curious about uh, the rest of the album, but um, let me just take that back a bit. I don't know what they're throwing on the stage. It looks like um, it looks like leaves or sticks or something, but it's, um, it's it's kind of weird. So I think this was filmed in the December, maybe of uh, eighty four. I'm not sure. I think we might have the Thompson twins, maybe. That's 
great bass. I've got to say it's really impressive that he's playing the drums with all that um, all that stuff like falling on them and um, I wonder if that like kind of really affects uh, the sound it must affect it a lot especially if it like hits some of our I don't even know what it is that brown stuff um, not sure at all at all about that Okay, I'm going to pause it there because uh, um, I might actually come back and watch the second half of this and react to Love is a Wonderful Colour um, live. Um, that sounds like a really good idea to do. Uh, and I think Love is a Wonderful Colour was out around about this time of year in, uh, in 84, so that's um, 39, 39 years ago. Um, but I'm so impressed with this first track on their album. I didn't expect it. Obviously, the fact that they're pairing uh, this track with Love is a Wonderful Colour means that um, they also rate it. Um, and I think that uh, I'm just trying to think back to the days of the tube that they the, the groups would do maybe one or two tracks. Um, maybe maybe one more but um i always remember groups doing like several tracks um just to kind of uh, keep the set um i don't know to kind of beef the set out but uh clearly that this is a, this is a good track and um uh, obviously i know love is a wonderful color that's that's a great song as well and um yeah just so impressed the guitars were fantastic on this the drumming was brilliant and uh it's just a really good uh meaty meaty song um his vocals uh really really enjoyed that it kind of i, I do sort of remember of his wonderful color now and that delivery it was um yeah just just really really cool i i really enjoyed this um i loved the style of singing back in those days i think there was a way of uh sort of singing that i i haven't really kind of heard for many many years and it was weird, there was a lot of bands doing this style of singing back in uh, 83, 84 and um, I mean I'm sure that it's sort of still about, I can't really put my finger on why it feels very grounded in those days of the 80s um, and I can't really put my finger on how to basically describe the way he's singing but it's just a particular style of singing and I, I guess it comes from very deep um, from very light in the chest or something then 
and it, it just feels very natural as well so it doesn't feel like it's forced or anything but um, reminds me a bit of a little bit of a echo and a bunny man in this um but yeah a absolutely great track and um, i might have a listen to the audio version just to see how similar the two are i don't want to spoil it by having listened to love is a wonderful color uh, this live set because um, I want to see how how close that track is to the the audio track is to this to chop the tree on this live tube version just to give me an idea of maybe what I might be expecting with Love is a Wonderful Colour but um, yeah the bass was fantastic on this it's um, I always find um, the more I do reactions the more I kind of I'm picking up the bass in songs because it it's almost like the scaffolding for the song in some ways but it kind of gives that lovely sort of like deep resonance to the rest of the music it's uh, it really kind of holds it up and binds it all together and some, sometimes I never used to sort of like pick up on a bass I used to be very much like there's the lead guitar um, there's like the rhythm, rhythm guitar um, going through the song and um, so I never really used to kind of think about the instruments. I, I loved the, um, the thing I really loved about this was the actual performance. It was very, very, it reminded me with that big microphone a little bit. I was trying to think who it was. Um, and um, I think it's the Thompson Twins who used to do that microphone as well. I can't remember his, his name is Tom something um, from the Thompson Twins. And I thought that was like a really, really cool look. But um, yeah, it's a really, really good song. Glad I listened to this actually. Uh, glad I'm doing some reactions as well, especially on a on a school night. Um, I've got a really early start tomorrow. Um, I usually get up about half five on uh, Thursdays to um, get to work. So I'm not going to be going too over the top. I'll try and edit one of these tracks tonight and uh, get it posted. But um, yeah, this is really cool. I wish uh, more people would react to uh, bands performing on the tube because um, it was quite a um, it was quite the thing back in the day we had top of the pops and the tube we were really really spoilt for music I think back then we really spoilt for music programs back then as well the old grey whistle test the tube um, top of the pops uh, what have we got now um, just reruns of top of the pops so uh, it would be nice to recreate this kind of uh, rawness of uh, musical talent again on live shows and stuff uh, I know we've got we have had Jules Holland and stuff but it's not really the same um, uh, I love I love the unpredictability of this show and the tube I love the presenters as well and um, I think it was Paulie Yates was it at the time and um, Jules Holland of course yeah uh, I'm trying to think if anyone else did it but uh, I can't think and um, yeah Loved it, loved the atmosphere, loved the uh, the camera work on stage, I loved his outfit. It kind of looked, it, it reminded me of those uh, dark cold days of, of early 84, although I think this was probably December. But um, yeah, really, really cool. I really want to check out another track on his album now. Um, maybe just uh, take one track at a time and uh, see what comes up. This was a really random pick, by the way. I didn't look at, you know, what they were performing or what they felt were their favourite tracks. I just started on a very debut album. I don't know how many albums they did, actually. If anybody knows how many albums the Icicle Works did, then uh, please let me know in the comments below. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to start at the very beginning, first track on a first album. So that's why I chose this one. And uh, glad I did. So guys, let me know what you think, join me in the comments below, and till next time, please take care of yourselves, enjoy the rest of the week, and hopefully I will catch up with you at the weekend, which is only two days away, so um, might have a good old rock session, I think, on a Saturday morning.